Live from the WTXL studios, this is ABC 27's News at Noon. We are following breaking news this noon. Tallahassee police have released preliminary results for the autopsy for Ryan Yuri. According to the Leon County Medical Examiner, Yuri's death appears to be accidental and seems to have been the result of a fall from the second story of the building where he was discovered. Good afternoon, I'm Mika Highsmith. We're learning that building did not have a second floor and it appears that he fell through the window. It is believed Yuri was alone. Now the report coming just one day after funeral services were held for the former Florida State student. As you can imagine, an emotional time for many. We'll always think about him. He's always in our hearts and you know, we'll miss him every day, but you know, we, we know he's home now. The 23-year-old had been missing since February 2nd, last seen leaving Andrews Bar and Grill after watching the Super Bowl with friends. His body was found last week in that empty building in downtown Tallahassee. On Sunday, friends and family gathered in Davie, Florida to say farewell. They also released balloons in Yuri's memory. It's more heartbreaking than your son missing. Um, it is, uh, there is some relief, you know, knowing that he's not wandering out there, knowing he didn't get abducted, knowing he's, you know, he's, he's nowhere where someone's gonna find him. The final autopsy report will not be released until toxicology reports come back. That could take six to eight weeks. New charges this afternoon for the man accused in the death of his six-year-old daughter. In addition to manslaughter, David Corson will also be charged with two counts of solicitation of a minor and lewd and lascivious battery. Troopers say that Rebecca Corson was hit and killed by a truck while playing in her yard at her Monticello home. A 13-year-old was driving the truck. Troopers say an eight-year-old passenger as well as David Corson were also in the vehicle. Investigators believe alcohol was involved in the accident and they say they also found a bag of marijuana. And we are expected to learn more details this afternoon about a woman who was found dead over the weekend in her swimming pool. Leon County deputies were called out Saturday to a home on Inverness Drive. This is where we're told they found the body of 36-year-old Samara Froch in her pool. Her two children were located in Panama City with 46-year-old Adam Froch. He has been arrested, charged with two counts of interference with child custody. No word on how Samara may have died. And jury selection begins in five weeks for the trial of the man charged with murdering a Tallahassee mother and her three children. Henry Segura faces four murder charges in the death of 27-year-old Brandi Peters, her six-year-old twin girls, Tamaya and Tanaya, and his three-year-old son, Javante, who he fathered with Brandy. The family was found dead in their Saddle Creek run home on November 20th of 2010. Meanwhile, our media partners at the Tallahassee Democrat report that Segura's attorney, Chuck Hobbs, has filed motions in Leon County Court to remove two statements Segura made to police. Hobbs says his client was misled into giving statements to police on two different dates following the murder. A ruling on the motions are expected in the next few weeks. And the mornings are the worst because it's not a nightmare. And the woman who survived the deadly, deadly helicopter crash in McCullough County is still haunted by the tragedy. This is Sherry DeVore, the lone survivor of that tragic accident. It happened February 8th as a chopper was taken off from the Wakola County Airport. While DeVore managed to survive the helicopter's pilot, Terry Uten, and a second passenger, Curtis Clifford, did not. Here's what she remembers about that fateful day. I was sitting in the back seat on the left hand side behind Curtis Clifford. All I remember is saying the pilot's name. I looked out my window and I saw something, which I assume now was trees, um, and I just screamed Terry. DeVore is now asking that everyone in the community keep the families of both Uten and Clifford in their prayers. 
Let's get a check now of your forecast. Meteorologist Michelle Rotella live in the Storm Team Weather Center. Michelle, dreary Sunday, but we're rebounding a little bit here. Yeah, just a little bit. Starting to get some sun into South Georgia. That's the good news, but still around the coastal areas and even here in Leon County, we're still dealing with some stubborn clouds. Take a look right now. Radar and satellite showing you the rain showers we had earlier this morning. That's all starting to clear up, and I think we're pretty much done with that. The light sprinkles that were through the area, it's all starting to dry up, but we're starting to clear out a little bit still. If you're heading to I-10 East, you'll run into some thick cloud coverage, and we were pretty mild this morning. Temperatures were in the 60s, and now we're slowly starting to heat up just a little bit. Still there, 69 in Tallahassee, 72 in Valdosta, Apalachicola. You're heating up nicely to 70 degrees right there. Perry still at 64 and 65 for Live Oak. I think the faster we can clear out, well, the warmer we're going to get, of course, with some more sun in the forecast. So some of us getting to around 74 degrees. Others might just be in the low 70s for today by 5 o'clock right there on 70. And it's still a mild night in store for us at 10 o'clock. We're looking at temperatures right around the 60s. And then when you wake up tomorrow morning, once again in the 50s. But there is more rain on the way. And I'll give you the full forecast and all the details on when that's arriving and how long it will stick around in just a few minutes. Mika? All right, Michelle, thank you. Newly elected president of Florida A&M University, Elmira Mangum, is now preparing her transition team. High on her list, interim president, Dr. Larry Robinson. Although it's not clear what position he will fill at the moment, Dr. Mangum says she's excited to work with Dr. Robinson. Mangum is also excited to make her move to Tallahassee permanent when she moves into the president's house on FAMU's campus. We're still ahead here on the news at noon. A neighborhood in Georgia saying no to the beepster. And a celebrity chef, Paula Dean, apologizing once again for using a racial slur. And is your cable bill getting out of hand? If so, some tips to help you lower it and keep more money in your pockets coming up. All right, historic moment in pro sports this weekend. Jason Collins became the first openly gay pro basketball player. Emmy Lacey Bordeaux reports. It was a groundbreaking debut when Jason Collins took the floor for the Brooklyn Nets Sunday night. It was his first appearance with the team after signing a 10-day contract this weekend. But more importantly, it was the first time the NBA veteran had entered the game as an openly gay athlete. Before the game, Collins thanked his supporters. I also want to take time to thank uh, all the fans, um, you know, all the family and friends who reached out to me today. Um, cell phone went crazy. Collins revealed he was gay in a Sports Illustrated article he wrote towards the end of last season. Collins wrote he was happy to be the first, but on Sunday, he said, That can't be my focus. Uh, my focus is, again, executing the game plan, learning the plays. I can't really focus on the off the court stuff right now. Sentiments echoed by another big name now openly gay athlete. All American defensive star Michael Sam was at the NFL Combine this weekend. And like Collins, he said he wanted to be known for his work on the field. I just wish you guys will see me as Michael Sam, the football player, instead of Michael Sam, the gay football player. Some have questioned how accepting the culture surrounding men's professional sports will be, but many fans are already on board. And that goes for Collins fans in Brooklyn, too. The place where Jackie Robinson broke the barrier for baseball, now we have the first openly gay athlete coming to the Nets stadium. Everybody nowadays is like open gay football player, you know what I'm saying? So I had no problem with that. As long as he got game, bring it on. <laughs> I'm Emma Lacey Bordeaux reporting. And some Atlanta residents want Justin Bieber out, but get this, he doesn't even live there yet. A few protesters picked up signs this morning to rally against the pop star's potential move. According to TMZ, Bieber is considering buying a mansion on Blackland Road in the affluent Buckhead neighborhood, but residents there say they have good reasons to not want Bieber in their neighborhood. Oh, uh, just a concerned citizen. Uh just because of his antics that he's had about the uh, the egging of his neighbor and his uh, his you know just behavior, street racing, potential drugs, we don't want that kind of of people in our neighborhood. Bieber said several run-ins with the law in Florida, California, and Canada. There has been no word from his camp about that potential move to Atlanta. Another controversial story for you here, a new app aimed at making users feel shame about being overweight. 
It's now causing a lot of conversation. It's all an effort to motivate those who need to lose a few extra pounds. But we want to know what you think. Just head over to our Facebook page and share your thoughts or tweet us at ABC 27. Your comments could make it on the air. We're going to throw this over to meteorologist Michelle Rotella now. What do you think? Where are you going to download the app, Michelle? Yeah, probably not. Just stick to the regular routine of working out and eating as well as I can. And also giving everyone the forecast. I think I can do that pretty well for you. Seeing some stubborn clouds around the capital city. Take a look for yourself. The Napleton Infinity Tower camera at top of the Doubletree Hotel. I see some sun out there. It's slow to clear, but temperatures will continue to be on the rise and clouds will continue to clear throughout the afternoon. I have heard on more than one occasion so that's why it's important to me to say this to y'all, that I never apologized. So if anybody did not hear me apologize, I want to apologize for those that did not hear me. Celebrity chef Paula Dean used her latest public appearance to once again say she is sorry for using racist language in the past. Now, Dean drew a crowd at the South Beach Wine and Food Festival over the weekend in Miami. Dean's career and reputation, as you may remember, were damaged in June with details from a former restaurant employee's lawsuit were released. She admitted to using the N-word in a videotape. Dean later lost her TV show and a number of endorsement deals. Earlier this month, Dean announced a new partnership to rebuild her brand. And the Daytona 500 came to an abrupt halt after 38 laps due to severe weather. A tornado warning was issued for the area, forcing track officials to evacuate the grandstand. But after a six hour delay and several accidents, Dale Earnhardt Jr. won the Daytona 500 race. It's been 10 years since he won his first race. So go Dale there and scary weather there. We had some thunderstorms yesterday, yesterday as well. Did you hear them? Just a loud crack of Woke thunder. Woke me up. I thought mm -hmm. it was right outside my window. 8 a.m. Yeah, some heavy downpours. <laughs> and uh, they had tornado warnings just north of Orlando. So yeah, I had friends that came all the way down to PA. They said, well, thanks for the warmer weather, but yeah. It's, it's raining cats and dogs. I didn't here. know what it was. It kind of seemed like the house shook a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little earthquake for you yeah. just to get things <laughs> shaken up on your Sunday. But here we had some rain earlier today, but now things are starting to shape up. The clouds have been very, very slow to clear throughout this afternoon. But look at that. The live tower cam showing you we are starting to see some sun in the capital city. Temperatures are starting to rise just a little bit. Still in the 60s, the upper 60s at that dew point right there at 57. So humidity sitting there right there at 65 percent. Still feeling a little bit muggy out there. The good news is rain showers are wrapping up, which I suspected they would. We should remain dry as we head into the evening hours and we should get a little bit more sun on our side too. 72 right there in Valdosta, 65 in Live Oak there, 69 like I mentioned in Tallahassee, 70 by the coastal areas in Mariana, just a tad cooler there around 67. I think we're still going to bump up a few degrees as we head into the afternoon hours and winds transitioning now to a light breeze. They were calm for this morning, but now coming out of the north and the northeast there, Valdosta there at seven miles per hour 12 though a nice breeze going on there a north a north wind there in Tallahassee eight there in Apalachicola and six a north wind there in Mariana so not too shabby you can see the remnants of the cloud coverage there of that cold front that passed through yesterday that did give us all the cloud coverage and the rain showers there now just kind of lingering towards central Florida they had a few showers earlier this morning will continue to dry up and clear up heading into the evening hours and then heading into Tuesday morning you'll notice a few more clouds temperatures back on the mild side and this warm front will start to lift. Tomorrow will be even warmer in the afternoon. We'll look at temperatures in the mid to upper 70s and then that's short lived because we're going to see some heavier rain showers start to push through the region. This next low pressure system. Yeah, that's a cold front tracking its way through the region on Wednesday, bringing us more clouds and rain and then unseasonably cool temperatures. So enjoy the 70s while we have it for the next two days this afternoon. 74 in some places, others there in the low 70s. And like I said, a mild night once again in store for us waking up with temperatures is right around 53 degrees. It will feel cool and much drier than we have been. I know this morning it was a little bit wet on the ground from all the heavy rain that we did see, but at least we're drying up now. Still some isolated showers out along the Big Bend coast. Some sun now towards the afternoon. 
and the winds also shifting to a more northwesterly flow. Seas around one to two feet and smooth waters around the bays and inland. Rip current risk on the low side and UV index on the moderate side as well. And I'll leave you with a look here at the seven day forecast just to show you the rain chances. They stick with us as we head throughout the next three days. A 70% chance of rain there on Wednesday. Yeah, we're definitely going to get some clouds and rain there. And like I said, we dry up and clear out as we head through Thursday, but it's a big change that we're going to be dealing with. Temperatures only getting to around 60 degrees and waking up. The cold, it didn't go anywhere just yet. It's still with us 30 degrees around that mark. So yeah, break the jackets in, the sweaters back out. Hate to be the bear of bad news, but we're not escaping the cold just yet. But on the bright side, this next weekend, not looking shabby at all. Yeah, it doesn't look like a washout at least. I know we had rain almost pretty much every day this past weekend, so at least things will shape up and be a little bit better this coming weekend. It looks like warmer temps too. So yeah, we'll back in that. the 70s. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Michelle, thank you. Well, the 2014 Winter Olympics now in the history books. The games in Sochi, not without controversy, but in the end, it was all about competition between the world's top athletes. Ian Lee has the latest from Sochi. The Winter Olympics made headlines before it even began. Tucked away in a volatile neighborhood, the threat of a terrorist attack in Sochi was very real. But Russian President Vladimir Putin's ring of steel has kept the game safe. Officials wished that'd be their only worry. It wasn't. It became clear weeks before the opening that Sochi wasn't ready, literally. There were unfinished hotels, some sketchy water, even bobsledder Johnny Quinn had to bust out of his bathroom naked after getting trapped. And hashtag Sochi problems on Twitter hit trending status. But all of this seemed to melt away once the games kicked off. Or it could have been the scorching weather. People in Sochi soaked in the sun and took a dip in the Black Sea with temperatures hitting the mid-60s. Skiers on the slopes would have had better luck with water skis than alpine. Of course, the games had its highs and lows. We learned the latest snowboarding lingo from gold medalist Sage Kotzenberg, like spice. 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 The USA men swept the podium in freestyle skiing. Gus Kenworthy may have won silver in that sport, but he won gold in the hearts of those back home after adopting four strays and their mom. The closing ceremony dazzled as the athletes took center stage one more time and Misha the Bear extinguished the Olympic flame, bringing the 2014 Winter Games to a close. So exciting. I can't believe it's already over. We're back after the break.